welcome back to the official YouTube channel of Anastasis Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ananya B. Chatterjee, your VARC mentor. Guys, we are at the fifth episode of Maverick Mastery Series CAT 2024, wherein we discuss the most anticipated types of questions for CAT this year. In today's episode, we are going to take up a passage of reading comprehension and try to look at the correct approach and the process of elimination to reach the right answers and avoid negative marking. All right, so the passage that we are going to take up today is based on Archaeopetrix lithographica, the flying dinosaur, yeah? Okay, so this is the passage. Let's start. From time to time, history and myth come peculiarly close to one another, casting a new light on old and often largely dismissed tales. In various Eastern cultures, the notion of the winged serpent, serpent means a snake, and the dragon have come down from the ages, only to be cast aside by modern society as fantastic mythological creations of someone's overactive ancient imagination. Now it seems the supernatural beast might have some historical antecedents. Antecedent means precedent, something that comes before something else. So the first paragraph talks about how in mythology, we have had images of dragons and winged serpents, uh, especially in Eastern cultures, uh, which we now brush aside as fantastical superstitious beliefs. But apparently this discovery that has come into light now has shed some clarity on the historical and antecedents of such myths. Maybe those myths are based in history. Second paragraph. Archaeopetrix lithographica lived during the latter part of the Jurassic period, approximately 150 million years ago, just south of what today is central Germany. So this particular animal lived when? Later part or the sorry, latter part of the Jurassic period, approximately 150 million years ago, and where this is the time of its existence, and this is the location, the place, central Germany. This ancient creature combined a reptilian body and tail, so it had the body of a reptile and a tail, with bird-like wings and feathers. So there was a tail, the reptilian body and tail. And it also apparently had feathers like birds. Fair enough. This beast has provided a wealth of information about the evolution of flight in birds. So while studying this animal or the fossils of this animal, the scientists could uh, gain a lot of knowledge about how the evolution of flight happened in birds that we see today. However, fossil and skeletal studies, skeletal studies are studies based on skeletons. Fossils and skeletal studies indicate that it was not capable of flight. So the first thing that we know about Archaeopetrix lithographica, this animal, is that it could not fly. None of the Archaeopetrix fossils discovered to date, including the most mature specimens, exhibit an ossified or bony sternum, the wide bone that extends from the chest to the pelvic area in most modern birds. So apparently, none of the fossils recovered of this animal had an ossified. Ossified is the process of solidification post-death, post-mortem that happens in all living creatures, right? It becomes calcified, it becomes rigid, uh, rigor mortis sets in. So these animals did not have a sternum. Sternum is the bone, you know, 
the white bone that extends from the chest to the pelvic region, which is there in the modern birds today. The main purpose of this structure, which is the sternum, are to protect internal organs during flight. So this is the first function of a sternum that is missing in uh, Archaeopteryx and to act as a sturdy anchoring point for the enormous pectoral muscles necessary for flight. So what are pectoral muscles? Muscles here, muscles that are required for wingspan and for flight to take place. So because you don't have the anchor, the pectoral muscles are not anchored. Sternum missing, so pectoral muscles are um, maybe not that developed. We don't know yet, but apparently the sternum was missing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There is no indication that Archaeopteryx ever developed strong pectoral muscles. Maybe because of the lack of a sternum again, the lack of an anchor. And perhaps this is one reason why it never developed a sternum. Okay, it's vice versa also. Because they did not have pectoral muscles, that strong pectoral muscles, probably that's why they nev never developed a strong sternum. Instead, it retained reptilian gastral ribs. Gastral is related to the digestive tract. One second. Gastral ribs, gastral ribs are there in Archaeopteryx. These are thin braces in the abdomen region which were not attached to the skeleton and which served only to support and protect the internal organs. So instead of a steady sternum protecting the internal organs, they just had gastral floating ribs which were not attached to the rest of the skeleton for the protection of internal organs. Researchers believe that flight would have been highly unlikely in an animal with such skeletal characteristics, although it had wings, but flight would have been highly unlikely. Furthermore, the bones in the manus of Archaeopteryx, manus is arm. In the biological parlance, manus is also another word for the arm, right? The bones in the manus of Archaeopteryx do not seem to have been fused. These are not fused bones. In the modern birds, these bones are fused in order to support the wing. So when you open the wing, you don't, birds do. But when the birds open the wing, the, the bones here are connected to one another. They're fused together, right? Which is not there in Archaeopteryx. Uh, in modern birds, ha, ha, ha. In addition, the ulna, what is the ulna? So if this is your arm, this is arm, there are two bones here, one and one here, here and here. So the bone here, sorry, here, this is called the ulna. This is called the radius. You can see that there is a space in the middle, right? So ulna. In addition, the ulna of modern birds is marked with small knobs. Of course, those knobs where feathers are anchored firmly to the bone by ligaments. So one more thing we get to know about birds is that feathers are um, attached or anchored firmly to the bones by the support of ligaments in modern birds. The ulna in Archaeopteryx, however, is smooth, no knobs, indicating that its feathers were not firmly anchored to the skeleton. Finally, the skeletal characteristics of Archaeopteryx seem to indicate that, the, that's, that this animal was most adapted to terrestrial movement, as in movement on the land. Its hind legs, the hind, hind legs are the legs that are in the back. Its hind legs and pelvis, abdomen area, closely resemble those of bipedal theropods and dinosaurs. So this region, hind legs and the pelvis, they look a lot like theropods and dinosaurs, not like birds. Suggesting that like these other bipeds, bipeds that walk on two legs, it was adept. It was adept as in skillful at running along the ground. It ran along the ground. In contrast to the posture of modern birds, whose bodies are suspended at the pelvis like a seesaw with the thigh bones horizontal. So if you look at a bird, 
you will see that the pelvis area is like a seesaw, you know, the feathers and the pelvis area, which is not the case with Archaeopteryx. It stood, up, it stood up on its hind legs with its long reptilian tail serving to balance it as well as enhance its ability to coordinate abrupt changes of direction while running. So the reptilian tail, this tail, this tail helped the animal balance itself while standing on two hind legs also to change directions abruptly right while moving around um in modern birds all the remains all that remains of the tail is a shrunken fused structure called the pigostyle pigostyle so in modern birds that tail has evolutionarily shrunken into something called a called a pegostyle a little thing something that humans also have the tailbone you know although the foot of archaeopteryx was bird like with fused metatarsals. Metatarsals, I'm sure you have seen the webbed feet of a duck, how webbed they are. Yes, yes. So fused with metatarsals like birds, it was also adapted to running, adapted to running, right? By way of its peculiar mix of feathers, it seems to represent a kind of features, sorry, it seems to represent a kind of transitionary phase illustrating the evolutionary leap from reptile to bird. So somehow it was the transitionary phase from a reptile to a bird and providing insight into the development of flight. So clearly the passage or the uh, information about Archaeopteryx lithographica gives us a lot of insight into the evolution of flight and how it happened in birds. Okay, so the first question is, suppose that scientists have recently found the skeleton of a bird capable of flight embedded in pre-Jurassic period rock. What effect would this discovery most likely have on their thinking about Archaeopteryx lithographica? If you find, if the scientists find an animal that was capable of flight in the early period of the Jurassic era, what would it, what effect would it have on the thinking of these scientists as far as this animal Archaeopteryx is concerned? Okay. D says, we are, we, we are starting with D, it would support the view that Archaeopteryx lithographica failed to develop the pectoral muscles necessary for flight. Not really. D cannot be the answer. Just because an, a, a bird or an animal is able, capable of flight before the Jurassic era or early Jurassic era, it doesn't have any bearing on the pectoral muscle evolution in Archaeopteryx. C says it would neither support nor undermine the view that Archaeopteryx lithographica represented a transitionary, but it does. I'll tell you how. It would support the view that Archaeopteryx lithographica represented a transitionary species between reptiles and birds. How? If in the early Jurassic period, you have something that can fly, then this Point, leap from reptile, last line, leap from reptile to bird in the latter Jurassic period is undermined. It would undermine no, the view that Archaeopteryx lithographica represented the transitionary species because the species has already come into existence in the early stage of Jurassic era then lithographica or archaeopteryx is not really the transitionary phase. It happened much earlier. Right? So B will be the correct answer in this case. Second question. Based on the information in the passage, which of the following statements is not true? A says, archaeopteryx lithographica, the animal's skeleton is similar to the skeleton of a modern bird. A says, B says, Archaeopteryx lithographica's tail played a larger role in its daily life 
than the tale of a modern bird plays in its daily life yes the tale of a modern bird in its daily life doesn't yes help it balance and enhance its ability to coordinate abrupt changes of direction so this is true and hence not the answer scientists have studied archaeopteryx lithographica in order to learn about the development of flight yes providing insight into the development of flight given in the last sentence given in the first sentence of the third paragraph multiple times the data has been given so not true but as in true and hence not the answer archaeopteryx lithographica shared some characteristics in common with the dinosaurs yes yes walked on two legs like dinosaurs it hind leg its hind legs and pelvis closely resemble those of bipedal theropods true but time and again it has been shown in the passage that the bone structure the skeletal structure of modern birds is very different from archaeopteryx the loss of a, the lack of a sternum the presence of gastral ribs the lack of development of strong pectoral muscles the lack of knobs on the ulna which can attach of uh, the feathers strongly so a is not true it's not similar right third question in the context the phrase wealth of information in third paragraph refers to what let us see where this phrase is wealth of information in the third paragraph this beast has provided a wealth of information about the evolution of flight in birds hmm. let us look at the option knowledge of fossil discoveries in what is now central germany no this is where archaeopteryx lived it's not it's not the wealth of information knowledge acquired by scientists studying the development of birds very good option evolution of flights in birds evolution of birds knowledge about archaeopteryx lithographica skeletal structure could be keep it in the parking lot knowledge of recent research no recent research has been talked about in the course of the passage no recent research has been talked about right so either it's b or it is c if it is b then the sentence shouldn't have taken birds into account through the skeletal structure of archaeopteryx they are learning more and more about the evolution of flight in modern birds if the answer would have been b then why mention modern birds at all we can go ahead with b and talk only about the skeletal structure of archaeopteryx that's not the case so between b and c c is what the answer should be because c says that the knowledge acquired by scientists on archaeopteryx helps us know more about the development of flight in birds that brings us to the fourth question the author suggests now when you see a question on suggestion it is not a hardcore inference right we have to see which one the author has implied within the confines of the passage which of the following about archaeopteryx lithographica okay okay its skeletal structure made it much larger than a modern bird now here it may be true but it has not been stated because relative size we may we might be imagining it but the passage doesn't say it hence it said within the confines of the passage not from our imagination so no it was less intelligent than a modern bird mm -hmm. could be no because intelligence has not been talked about cognitive skills of the birds have not been talked about neither uh, the intelligence of archaeopteryx um its wings had a different function than the wings of a modern bird is that something that we can infer 
That's the question. Now, when you talked about wings, when you talk about wings, we can see here that the feathers, usually the feathers are anchored firmly to be to the bone by ligaments. But in archaeopetrix, it is smooth, indicating that its feathers were not firmly anchored into the skeleton. So we don't know what functions were uh, taken up by the wings of archaeopetrix, but we know for sure that they were not for flying, unlike the wings of the modern birds, because they were not firmly anchored to the ulna. So yes, this is what the author has suggested. Although we don't know the categorical function uh, of the wings in archaeopetrics. A says it did not have as well developed a tail as a modern bird. It's the opposite. Modern birds do not have tails. They have shrunken tails called pigostyle. Archaeopetrics had a tail. So that's the fourth question. Moving to the fifth one. Suppose scientists were to find a skeleton of Archaeopetrix lithographica that has a sternum similar to the sternum of a modern bird. According to the passage, which of the following beliefs would this finding most strongly challenge? Agar sternum hota, proper sternum, to usse konsa belief challenge hota? Let's see. The belief that Archaeopetrix lithographica lived in what is today Europe, living and sternum have no connection. So gone. The belief that Archaeopetrix lithographica lived in Jurassic period, again, the timeline and the sternum have nothing to do with one another. C says the belief that Archaeopetrix lithographica lacked bird like feathers. Mm. C. The sternum was not for uh, feathers. It was the ulna that was the anchor point for feathers, like in modern birds. So again, not related. But the belief that Archaeopetrix lithographica lacked the ability to fly, yes. Because if it had a sternum, it should have had well-developed, ideally, it should have had well-developed pectoral muscles, right? And well-developed pectoral muscles could be an indication for the ability to fly, according to the passage. Finally, researchers believe that archaeopetrix differs from modern birds for all of the following reasons, except knobs found on the ulna. Yes, modern birds have them. Archaeopetrix do not. Ossification of the sternum, yes, modern birds have sternum. And in the fossils that we found, none of the archaeopetrics had ossified sternum. Pectoral muscle development, modern birds have developed pectoral muscles that uh, our dear archaeopetrix clearly doesn't have. Lack of feathers, no, both had feathers. Just that in modern birds, the feathers were anchored firmly, which was not the case. Archaeopetrics also had feathers, just that they were not anchored nicely firmly into the ulna. That's the difference. So that's how you go by your process of elimination, having understood the passage, and you look for data points time and again to check the accuracy of each answer. So that's that. Okay, I have given one practice passage to you. This passage is on, uh, this is a short passage on minority owned businesses in the United States, followed by I think six questions. That's the first question. You can pause and attempt the question. The second one. The third one. The fourth one. Fifth. And sixth. You would find the answers of these six questions in the description box. 
keep practicing reading comprehension in a similar fashion going by the process of elimination and always remember that it is important to get to the right answer but it is also critically important in the practice phase to know why a wrong answer is a wrong answer i think that is the cornerstone of reasoning based reading comprehension okay thank you very very much for being patient and uh, keep learning keep studying i'll see you in the next episode take care mm -hmm.